Ladies, gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, I actually had scheduled to release the dyno footage for our first in the world ESS supercharger on a 2021 Mach 1. <laughs> We're gonna have to push that back a couple of days because we have some breaking news leaked on Mustang 6G and 7G and Ford Authority. We have now officially leaked images of the 2024 S650 brand new Mustang interior. Today's video, we're gonna dissect it all and how it's affecting the Mustang because there are some things on the interior of this car I do not like and I think that you won't either. Without further ado guys, let's dig into it. Let's discuss. Let's show you the interior of the all-new 2024 S650. Let's go. Hopefully the lighting is okay. Got the garage door closed. We've got some rain coming in, but I've got my cheat sheet here. Basically, we're gonna look at these pictures together. I'm gonna look at every single detail as much as possible, every single angle. Let's start with the first one. Our first look at the all new 2024 Mustang S650 interior. Now we've already covered the exterior in a past video and you guys ate it up, you guys loved it. The video did really well and it was really controversial because the 2024 was supposed to be a clean sheet build, but with all of the pandemic stuff and the shortages and this, that, and the other, things got not uh, change. Now there is leaked information out there. Maybe we're going to get different uh, models of engines, maybe hybrid options, and possibly an all-wheel drive option as well. A lot of people are kind of 50-50 and I am too. Again, the full camo is not off of that car yet, so we just don't know. But now, it looks like we have some official leaked images of the interior. What we're going to be looking at, the first picture here is they've got the door cracked open a little bit. Finally, Finally, Ford has listened to us and it looks like we're gonna get a flat bottom on all trim levels. I always think that Ford kind of plays it a little too safe, but it looks like they're finally going a little bit more modern. So we got a flat bottom steering wheel. We have different layers of leather there. It looks freaking awesome, dude. I actually really dig the flat bottom steering wheel. I think it looks fantastic. We have paddle shifters I can see. It looks like they're silver in color. Honestly, maybe they're metal. Maybe kind of something like the 2020 GT500 has. The button layout is interesting because they're much larger. So that's not a bad thing, you know, uh, easier to get to, easier to navigate your screen, which you can see right above that steering wheel. There is a big digital cluster and it's a complete different layout than what we have in like a 401A option car, your premium cars out there, 18 plus. I mean, for me, that's like a must have. So I'm a big tech guy. I like all that stuff in a car and it's cool to see that Ford is moving into the future a little bit more. In the right direction, it looks like. So airbag, obviously, is gonna be a complete new design. Looks fine, honestly. I don't think that there's anything negative to say about that, and I think it looks good. You can see the automatic shifter right there is, looks like the same as what we've already had for the past, I don't know, <laughs> 10 years, but that's fine. But right there in the center of it, you can see that there's a new entertainment center layout. So this looks to be definitely bigger. It looks like it's gonna to be touchscreen, which I don't really know if I feel good about that, honestly. Generally, cars in the past that are only touch don't really, they're, they're just not very intuitive. As we go through these pictures though, it looks like we're still gonna have that functionality with, you know, push buttons and turn knobs down there where the air vents are beneath that. So this is kind of Camaro-esque in a way. Um, not a bad thing, honestly. It's uh, It brings the entertainment center up maybe more into your line of sight, your view. So with the S550, we already had the general layout the curvature of the dash and so that what Ford did was they incorporated a digital dash into that area now it looks like you know they've got a squared off portion so is a whole new redesign for as far as dash layout goes and we're gonna be able to get a larger screen uh, you can drag your finger up and down for climate controls uh, get a get a good view there of the air vent and it doesn't look like they can you know turn like they used to so it looks like a pretty much a traditional air vent style too in the center there beneath the entertainment center and then you can see directly underneath of it, you've got your turn knobs. So you can see volume there. You can see some of the HVAC controls. And then as we continue moving on. So here's our first red flag. So with all the EPA stuff going on and all this, this big push for electric vehicles, um, you know, it's going to be some time before that hits the Mustang Coupe. We already have the Mach-E. But as far as Mustang Coupe goes, the 2024 is supposed to be more... EPA friendly. What that means for horsepower and the way that it's going to change the Mustang from its ICE engine that it already has, we shall see. It looks like we still have standard push to start in the same general vicinity, but the, the button that's right next to that, to the right of that. 
flash. It's got automatic start stop guys. I don't know if this is something that you're gonna have to trigger every single time you get in the vehicle or if you can just turn it off and then it'll stay default off until you want it on. Stupid feature where it cuts the engine off when you come to a stop and it doesn't stay off for very long. If you're running AC, it kicks right back on and to me, it's a dumb, silly thing to have and it kind of ruins the experience a little bit. That's just my pet peeve, I don't like it and I think 99% of you guys don't either. Unless it was an option that you could push it off and it would completely stay off until you wanted it to come back on even if you cycle the, the car on and off. Unless I want it back on because I'm trying to save gas, then I don't have a problem with it. But if I have to toggle that button, it's just one more button to push and mess with whenever I want to get into the car and enjoy it and have some spirit of driving and do whatever. I just don't like it, guys, and I don't think that you do either. But anyway, so then it looks like right to the right of that one, you have the pony button, which I am going to go on a limb and say that's probably going to be your drive modes, okay? That's where you're going to go into just like what we have on the steering wheel right now. It allows you to get into your track apps, your drive modes, your exhaust modes, and so on and so forth. To see that relocated down here is not a bad thing. I, I personally like all of my driving controls on the steering wheel itself. You sit in the car, you buckle up, your hands go to the steering wheel, and you want to drive. Okay, you put it in gear, you want to drive. And then you can just double tap or whatever on the steering wheel itself and get to all the information, all your suspension modes, all your drive modes. But now it looks like they're moving that away down further, lower down in the center console where you would normally flip up your switches for drive modes. We're gonna continue going on. You've got hazards there and then you've got a star. Don't know what that's gonna be about. So we're gonna go into another angle here. We're gonna look at it from the, the passenger perspective. Again, you get a, a nice look at that flat bottom steering wheel. Looks good. Uh, looking at the door, so it looks like we have pretty much the same layout as far as door handle goes on the interior. That's fine, don't have a problem with it. And then the center console and all the switches there, you get a really good look at it. Now, something also that we I wanna point out is this whole thing looks like it's kind of, it looks like it's turned a little bit, maybe more driver centric. And if you really pay attention to these pictures here, but it looks like almost like the digital cluster where it starts to the left, it goes all the way to the far right side of the entertainment center, like it's one big screen and it's kind of curved and it's driver centric. That's freaking cool. That exists in a couple of the cars right now, some trucks and some stuff that's coming to the market, but to have it a Mustang, to have something really large like that, and then also driver-centric is a big win. I think I think that's pretty freaking cool. Some nice stitching there, leather wrapped center console. Looks like you've got some storage. It looks like we still have a handbrake too, which is nice. You know, so it's nice to see the Ford going in the direction of technology into the modern age, but we still have some of the things that make the car functional to us. Again, another look at the steering wheel. I think it looks freaking money, dude. I like this thing a whole lot. So I really wish that we had some more exterior pictures and unfortunately they're all still camoed up and you got that big hump in the rear and nobody knows what's going on and nobody really knows what's up at the front end of the car and there's so many things that are just like up in the air right now but it's cool that we finally have pictures of the inside of this 2024 mustang this this next one here is a nice sharp look at the center buttons the center the center console switches um actually they're not switches it looks like they are buttons it looks like uh, there's nowhere to put your finger underneath. It looks like you're probably going to be pushing down or pushing in. But you see that we've got that auto start stop. Really bad to see in a Mustang. Honestly, that is uh, really frightening. It's just another button to push. And I, I know that we're moving in the new direction for the future. And uh, how it's affecting the Mustang, we shall see. But that's not something that I, like to, I would ever want to see in a Mustang is an auto start stop. I know this is a lot of talking head, but like I said, we got weather outside, so we're not going to be off driving doing this, and this really allows me to sit in front of you guys on the front of the camera and then dive through these one-on-one. -on -one. If you guys like this kind of content, or if you want to see more Mach 1 stuff, boosted Mach 1 stuff, you know, big things are coming to this car, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it. It's helping us grow. You know, the channel's been taking off here lately. I mean, it's been growing like crazy. I love you guys and the family and the community on this YouTube channel, so make sure you're subscribed and turn your post notifications notification bell turn it on so that you don't miss further content because we may be buying one of these 2024 
uh, Mustang. So we shall see. I don't know. Uh, the more of this car is unveiled, we shall see. But uh, it's going to be interesting. But yeah, that's really it. So let me know in the comments, like, what do you think about this whole new direction that Ford is moving in? It's cool, but it's also scary at the same time. So we like Mustangs for performance. But when we see things like auto start stop, it's, it's frightening because we don't know how bad the emissions, the new emissions are going to really be hurting the Mustang. Is the performance going to go down? I mean, yeah, we're going to get better handling and we're going to get all wheel drive possibly, this, that, and the other. If it's a hybrid electric assisted engine, I'm okay with that because with other cars and trucks, you know, generally that helps out. But whenever Mustang goes full electric, I, uh, I don't really know how I feel about that, man. I just don't, I don't think I'm there yet, honestly. But I would love to hear your opinions on what you think about all of this. What do you think about the exterior? What do you think about the interior? Because this is it. This is, uh, looks like it's near production as far as what we see here on the inside of this Mustang. What trim level Mustang this is, we don't know. But it's interesting to see nonetheless. But it's interesting to see nonetheless. So, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Like, share, subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video, which will be the dyno reveal of this all-new ESS supercharger system. And it's going to blow your minds because it did ours. So, I'll see you guys later. God bless all of you. And bye.